Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I always like to go through little scraps of paper <clears throat> to put down on the canvas. Um, looking for some kind of interesting words. Um, some of them, I'm kind of weird. I, I like kind of funny stuff. So I thought maybe like the Star Bar Dive might be a cute building on the painting. Um, I saw this recipe for horseradish shrimp. I'll probably cover most of this stuff up. You won't even see it anyway. But I kind of know that it's there. Great stories. I'm thinking I might put the word fish over there. So I might have like great fish stories. Just something sort of going along with the seaside theme here. I found this. Okay, I'm a hoarder. I'm sorry. I got my dad a rod and reel a couple years ago for Christmas. And here's, I save this little tag, ready to fish. So, who knows, I might use it. All right, and then just little scraps of scrapbook paper. I like this pattern. I think I got it at Hobby Lobby. And I like it because it kind of reminds me of kind of the Greek colors of the blue and white, which always remind me of seafood. And of course, my handy dandy dictionary pages. So I am going to start gluing these down and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm using, let's see, Mod Podge matte medium. You can use any kind of matte medium. I prefer to use the matte over a semi-gloss um, today because I'm gonna be doing lots and lots of layers on top of it and I wanna have more of a matte surface. some coarse texture gel to kind of give the feel of like sand and texture kind of in the bottom part of the picture and then also some modeling paste and I'm going to use some stencils some nautical stencils and kind of put some little images kind of over the canvas and then when I go back over with paint you'll see this little relief of the uh, uh, stuff so I'm just going to get a little bit of this, um, there's really no scientific method, I'm just kind of squirting out some of this texture gel. And I really like the way it looks and feels when it's dry. And I'm just sort of dabbing it, I want some raised areas. Really no pattern, I just want the feel of it. there. All right. And then for the mod, oh that's the texture. Then for the modeling paste, I'm going to just squirt some on my plate here. You see that? My beautiful paper plate palette out quite a bit here. Gets gooey, crusty. All right. And then a palette knife. I don't like this one, it's too small. Of course my desk is such a disaster. I don't know where my bigger one just went. to use it. And then I've got these stencils. I got them for, I think they're Martha Stewart. I got them at, at um, Michael's. 
last year. And of course I'm making a mess because my texture gel isn't really dry, of course. But anyway, if you see this little sailboat, I'm just gonna pick up some modeling paste. And I'm just gonna smooth it over the stencil. And then there's the seashell here that I like. I'll smooth that. And then when you lift it up, if you can see the relief that it makes, I'm gonna put another seashell. And let's see. Maybe another sailboat. Here's the little ship's wheel down here. That's the neat thing about mixed media is there's so much to look at when people you take your first glance and you go, oh, that's really nice. But then when you really start looking at all of the detail, that's what makes these paintings so interesting is somebody can just look at it and keep finding little hidden treasures. All right. So I think that's about it. And I'm going to let this dry. Okay. Since I have no patience, I went ahead and zapped this dry with my heat gun because otherwise this coarse texture gel takes a while and the modeling paste takes a while to set up. So I just thought, well, I'll just zap it and we'll keep on going. So first of all, on my last painting, I kind of wanted a pink sky because I was thinking of that old poem of um, Red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky at morning, sailors take warning. So you can either pretend it's a sunrise or a sunset, just depending. So anyway, it's gonna be a little pinky colored up here. So first I'm gonna take my spray bottle and I'm just gonna spritz just very gently, get that just a little wet and Let's see, I'm just, I think I used just different colors of pink. I know I used this rose uh, portrait pink from uh, Artist Loft. And I'm just gonna do some little dots because that's just what I do. And then I'm going to put a few dots of Americana. I think I used bubblegum pink, so we'll go with that. And then, oh boy, I'm just about out of my heavy body white. I like heavy body white a lot of times for my blending because it gives better coverage. So I'll use it for as long as I have it. I'm going to take a paper towel. This is a very scientific method way to paint. I'm going to get it just a little wet in my water bucket over here. And, and I'm going to just start dabbing this in the sky. I'm going to, oops, I meant to kind of keep that I don't want my words to show through, but we'll see. And I kind of like the way the orangey pinks blend together. I think that's about as far as my horizon will go. And then I get rid of that. And then I take my another paper towel and dipped in some white. And while it's still wet, I'm just going back blotting it. And I'll probably go back over this several more times with some different colors in here too, so it won't all be flat. I think I touched my last one up quite a bit with a lot of white and maybe a little bit of gold in there in the sky too. But we'll start here. Sort of rub off the 
foods that I still want to show for a little while. Okay. So we'll stop there for now and then I'm going to get some blue, this light blue permanent Liquitex. You can use any colors you want. You can use fluids. I'll, I'll end up putting fluid acrylics in this painting too. But um, a lot of times I like the heavier body. And the sand textures are so nice. So you're going to just kind of see this gritty look when I start brushing this on. And I'm just sort of getting in my mind right now where I want the water. Um, I guess I'll do it pretty similar to my last painting. So I just start with kind of brushing this in. I'm picking up a little bit of white on the palette too. shrimp there. Okay. And now I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to sketch in some buildings, just kind of get an idea of where I want the layout of some of the buildings and the boats. So let me find my pencil. Of course I have 15 pencils except when I'm getting ready to do anything. I'll just use this one. Okay. So I'm going to have the coastline sort of follow where I painted. And so I'm going to make this like a restaurant here, the dive-in bar. Just sort of put my roof. Actually I'm going to change that roof and do it like I did be the other one. Kind of make it look like a little lighthouse on top of it. This will get covered over with paint, so don't worry. Okay. <clears throat> kind of looks like a church. I don't think the bar would be in the church, so I'll fix it. Alrighty. Done. A shorter building. And they can be a little wonky, so don't worry about everything being straight. I'll fix it. Another building down here. And I'm going to start blocking in the buildings and there will be many, many layers to these buildings as well.
probably going to use some burnt umber. Shadowing a little. And don't worry, we're going to go back over this too with more colors. So just sort of building up layers of shadow, depth. Defining the sides, maybe, maybe not. There we go. So I think the dogs see deer outside, so we'll probably have to stop the camera a lot for them to bark. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of some midnight blue and start adding some depth to the ocean. along the edge. You see how we're starting to give a little depth to it. Just so that it's, you know, not completely flat. Like my brush, they always fall apart. I'm kind of thinking in my mind where I'm going to have the boats, so I'm adding a little shadow with the darker blue where I'm going to have the boats. gold. You see that? It's my favorite. It's a little bit metallic, yummy. I love it for shading. So I'm going to start with, see how it's just sort of translucent. It just goes right over top of whatever you're painting and just gives it more depth. So I'm going to Put some up here on the shore.
I'll cut out some little shapes for the sailboats. I'm going to glue those down. sailboats and I went around some of the buildings with this um, my favorite pencil it's a 9XXB pencil just to sort of outline some of the buildings give them a little shape so now I'm going to just sort of highlight the boats with some paint <clears throat> and a little red So I just went back over this. I didn't like the big black blob, so I just sort of did a little bit more red in there, shaped up the boat just a little more, and um, did my sides. I just need to touch up here, though, where I messed up. So I'm going to dab just a little more white on a paper towel. Just a little. You like this method of using my fingers? It really works. Okay, so I think this is done. If you want to just get in a little closer. You kind of see the some of the texture elements a little bit. So you can kind of see where the sand texture paste goes. And that's it. I think I'm naming this one Bar Harbor because of the bar and the harbor. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. I'm Ruth with Effie Sue's Whimsical World and Effie Sue Designs. Thank you.